What's up, I'm travel photographer Brendan Vanson of brendansadventures.com and this is how a travel photographer takes a vacation. So as a professional travel photographer, I think the question I get asked more than anything is what do I do for a vacation? Of course, people think my life is a vacation. They think all I do is walk around taking pictures all the time, when of course that's not true. I work 16, 18 hour days from dusk till dawn sometimes just because it's fun doesn't mean it's not work. I work hard. I swear it. So if your life is a vacation and all you do is travel around taking pictures for a living, what do you do to escape and to have a bit of a vacation? Well, I do absolutely nothing. So the first step to doing absolutely nothing as a travel photographer on your holiday is to find a nice hotel. Now that hotel should be at least like at least four times out of your usual budget. It should be absolutely comfortable, should be luxury, and it should be comfortable, <laughs> essentially. I'm at the Delta Lodge of Kananaskis, which is one of my favorite properties on the entire planet. It is beautiful out there. We've got stunning nature. We're right at the foot of the ski hill and some beautiful mountains like Mount Kidd. Uh, it's stunning out there, and I would love to go out there and take pictures. But that's not how it works here. You're, it's all about the hotel. Taking a vacation as a travel photographer is about enjoying the hotel and its amenities. Step number two to taking a vacation as a travel photographer is to try to never leave your room. If you can, just don't go outside. Do absolutely nothing. Don't put on pants for an entire day. If I wasn't filming this video right now, there would be no pants on here. There would be at most a house coat, likely less. You do not put clothes on if you're on a vacation as a hotel, as a travel photographer. You don't leave your room for anything. You uh, order room service where you can. You have the hotel bring you up a nice bottle of champagne for you to drink and relax and you do nothing. Also, you don't want any disturbances when you're in your room doing absolutely nothing, so be sure to hang the sign on the door and tell those cleaning ladies to go away. You don't need a clean room. You're doing nothing. Now, step number three is the most important one, and it's really hard for me to do. In fact, by filming this video right now, I'm proving that I can't do it. Step number three is to turn off all your devices. Turn off your phone, turn off your emails, turn off your computer, turn off your camera, turn off everything. No photo editing, no emailing, no nothing. You're not allowed to do any of that. The only device you're allowed to use is a TV or movies. You're only allowed to relax. That's the only thing you're allowed to do on vacation as a travel photographer. Step number four is have a drink. It's important. You're allowed to start drinking if you're on vacation as a travel photographer at like 10 in the morning if you want. In fact, you could probably start at 9 in the morning if you, if you want like a champagne breakfast. If you want champagne for breakfast as a travel photographer on vacation, you're more than welcome to it. Now, if you don't drink alcohol, if you're not an alcoholic like myself, you're more than welcome to exchange the alcohol for chocolate, fondue, you could have a chocolate fondue, or excessive amounts of sugar of any kind. And essentially, just go excess on anything. Anything that you're normally not allowed to do, go excess on it. That's step number four. Step number five to having a vacation as a travel photographer, or I guess a traveler of any kind, essentially, is to leave the room only to find even more luxurious things or more relaxation. So I'm not a spa guy, but if you're somewhere like the Delta Lodge at Kananaskis that has a fantastic spa, head down that way. I'm more likely to head down to the hot tub, relax in a hot tub or a jacuzzi or a steam room, and just let those stresses of always trying to capture images out of your body and into the warm water or sauna. That is the trick. So anyway, that's it for me. I've shown you a little bit around the Delta Lodge at Kananaskis through this video, and it is a beautiful property. If you're looking for a traveler's vacation, I swear this is top-notch. And even if you're not looking for a vacation, if you're looking to do some business, 
and you're an internet fiend, this is the place. They've got like internet speeds that I've never even seen before. I uploaded a video yesterday that was almost a gigabyte and it uploaded in four minutes. It's just insane. So if you're looking to do business, you're looking to upload photos or do anything online, the Delta Logic Kananaskis will hook you up. If you're also looking for a place to escape, there's tons of hiking around here, lots of trails and it's beautiful. Just be careful because there's also lots of bears around and you do not want to turn into a bear snack. Anyways, that's it for the show today. It's been a relaxing day for me here at the lodge. I'm just chilling out, drinking champagne, eating snacks, cheese, wine and cheese. That's how I'm doing things here. I want to urge you though to head over to my website, brendansadventures.com and find my newsletter. Subscribe for that newsletter because when you do, you get a free copy of my adventure travel magazine, Vagabundo Magazine, which is chock full of some sweet travel photography stuff. I also want to remind you to subscribe to this channel. If I haven't put you too far off with the craziness in this video, subscribe to the channel and there's great travel photography coming up from here in Western Canada and beyond as we move on to places like South America perhaps in the new year or a big road trip in the States. So stick around. I'll get you next time. I'm off to drink more champagne. Peace.